urgent oral question to the Minister for the Economy. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in your places. The member who tabled the question will be automatically called to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister for the Economy what her department is doing in conjunction with executive colleagues to provide immediate and targeted financial support to businesses in the Derry City and Straban District Council area directly impacted by the additional COVID-19 restrictions effective from 5 October 2020. I call the Minister for the Economy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, um, and thank you to my colleague uh, for this uh, question on this very, very important topic. The decision by the Executive to apply restrictions in the Derry City and Straban District Council area simply reinforces the fact that we are still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and that the transmission rate in that locality has risen dramatically over recent weeks. On Friday, I met with business representatives from the North West to discuss the impact that localised restrictions will have and the kind of support they will need. Whilst clearly the greatest help would be to allow them to continue trading, I reassured them that the Executive would provide financial assistance to those businesses instructed to close. While it, it is mainly hospitality businesses who will be impacted by the Executive's decision, other businesses will feel the impact too. I made it clear that in my view, this is not a choice between protecting our hospitals or protecting hospitality. I have been enormously proud of the way the hospitality sector in Northern Ireland has acted in a responsible, resilient and determined fashion. Executive decisions have never and should never be a binary choice between health and the economy. The economy is not a nebulous term. It represents every job, every paycheck, every bill, and every dinner on the table. I have asked my officials to engage with uh, Department of Finance officials uh, on Thursday after the decision was made. We have a number of possible options for providing support, but the priority is to devise a scheme that gets targeted financial help to those businesses asked to close in an efficient and streamlined way. My hope would be that the executive can agree the mechanics on how that support can be delivered within a matter of days. I would also use this opportunity to remind people of the importance of following the executive advice. Wash your hands, socially distance, wear your mask. We all carry the responsibility of playing our part to slow the spread of COVID, and it is the best way to protect the health of our people and the health of our economy. Thank you. And I call Gary Middleton to ask a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for her answer and for joining with me on Friday and meeting some of those business leaders in my constituency? Uh, they, like I, recognise the uh, role that the Minister has played. Uh, with the economy in these challenging times. Our Council was represented at that meeting, Minister. Uh, would you see the Council as an option uh, in terms of getting the money out to businesses on a, in a fast and timely manner? Um, again, I, I do thank um, the member for organising the meeting. Um, I think people were um, confused and, and uh, alarmed um, obviously at the rising rates of the transmission of the virus, but also significantly alarmed at the impact on the local economy and on jobs and livelihoods. The main um, focus on getting a scheme out will be to devise a scheme that is quick, that is clean and easy uh, to administer. And that's really what our focus should be. I was really heartened uh, to hear from the local council who offered their help in any way that they could. Um, and when we um, eventually make a decision, I think that the local council will have an important role to play um, in uh, 
working with the local businesses in checking which businesses are closed or which have been severely impacted uh, by the restrictions in the local area. Um, and if we can remove layers of bureaucracy by allowing the council to administer the scheme, then I'm relaxed about that. But the important thing is to get money out to businesses quite quickly in difficult circumstances. Thank you. And I call Stuart Dixon. Mr. Speaker, Minister, given the inevitability of where we are in uh, Derry and Straban, uh, can you tell the House what preparation that you made for this inevitability, and or, or are you just playing catch up? Um, I think that um, even health officials um, would remind the member that they were extremely uh, surprised, not just. Um, by the, the, the rise in the number of cases, but by actually the exponential rise and how quickly those cases uh, arose in this particular area. The member asks um, a very, uh, though, uh, useful question, um, because it is important uh, that we realise, um, and that uh, members in this House realise, that we as a department um, have been warning of the impact of lockdown or restrictions on the local economy. We think that that will place um, our local businesses who are just starting to um, build and recover a little bit from where they were from the earlier shutdown of the economy um, in a really difficult place. Not only that, Mr. Speaker, but um, any further lockdowns in the local economy and the end of the furlough scheme will see a significant rise in unemployment. We potentially could experience unemployment levels um, such as we haven't seen since the early 1990s. That is not a place that I want uh, for Northern Ireland to be, for local communities to be. Um, and I will try in every way possible uh, to support the economy uh, and those people who find themselves in different, uh, are in difficult uh, positions. We are not, of course, playing catch up in the Department of the Economy. We have already submitted our short to medium term recovery plan. Last week, um, I submitted uh, documents to the Executive Office, which I hope will be discussed at the next Executive meeting on the economic impact of restrictions and lockdown. These are very, very difficult, severe uh, times for our economy. And working collectively together, not making political point scoring, would be very helpful in seeing our people and our communities through hard times. Thank you. And I call Martina Anderson. Good, uh, Minister, I want to support uh, the need for immediate um, so financial support for businesses in Derry and Straban, particularly as they are facing into more necessary restrictions. Some of them are running on empty, Minister. So, therefore, have you compiled a bid that can go to the British Exchequer, the uh, Treasury, so that those businesses, particularly those that feel that they have been left behind, those, the thousands of those who are categorised as self-employed, who haven't had a penny of support during this pandemic? Well, first of all, can I correct the member on a couple of uh, the issues that she has expressed? It would not be up to me to compile a bid uh, to the Exchequer on this. It would be for the Executive to make a financial ask and for the Finance Minister, your colleague, uh, to translate that and talk to uh, Her Majesty's Treasury about that. Can I also say that um, in terms of those who were self-employed, um, that there was about 78,000 individual self-employed people supported through the self-employed scheme that has been in place and continues to be in place um, in the same way right up until the end uh, of October. This is possibly the highest uh, proportion or percentage uh, per pop head of population uh, throughout the United Kingdom who were actually supported um, in terms of this scheme. What the member may be referring to um, is those people who were recently self-employed and therefore had not made a tax return. And there is no doubt that those folk are in very, very difficult 
uh, positions. And of course, um, I continue to talk uh, to the Secretary of State at Bayes and indeed have written directly to the Chancellor to indicate that this is a national problem which requires a national solution um, and one that the Chancellor should address. I am and have common cause with MPs right across the United Kingdom in relation to that particular issue. Can I just, and I will, Mr. Speaker, with your forbearance, um, uh, round up. I absolutely agree with the member on the need to get some financial support to those businesses who have suffered restrictions. I spoke on Friday to a number of hoteliers uh, from the city. Um, and they all indicated that they were really pleased with the way trading had gone in August. They were looking forward to a better September, October, and they were well aware of the work that the Tourism Steering Group had done in relation to formulating and articulating bids to the Finance Minister, and indeed the Finance Minister in responding positively to those bids. So therefore, um, they were completely um, taken unawares by this dreadful rise in the transmission of the virus and the fact um, that their industry was targeted for restrictions. Can I ask the Minister to weigh into comments, please? Thank you. Nevertheless, like all of the hospitality sector, they are resilient and they will trade through it, but they do need to know, as a matter of urgency, how long those restrictions will last. I call Cara Hunter. Mr Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister uh, for her comments so far. Uh, as furlough is running out, can I ask the Minister how she and her department uh, intend to support employees in the city and district who will have to self-isolate? Uh, there may be questions of affordability, but we can't afford to have those who are supposed to be self-isolating uh, attending work to feed their families. Can I ask the Minister to keep her remarks to two minutes, please? Thank you, Mr Speaker. I do apologise. <laughs> um, yeah, again... Can Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Take the question. Okay. Um, can I can I thank the member for her question? Um, two elements to this that I really do want to address. One is the issue of support for those who are self-isolating, um, and uh, the finance minister has indicated that he will find out whether or not there are any kind of what we call Barnet consequentials in order in, for money that would come uh, to Northern Ireland in, uh, specifically for that. Um, and I am hopeful that we will be able to address uh, the financial issues around businesses that have been asked to close in the relatively near future. But would remind the House that this is a situation that is likely to be repeated around Northern Ireland for some considerable period of time, and therefore we as an executive have to be sure that there will be the finances to support that, not just in the North West, but in other areas across Northern Ireland, should that need arise. Can I call Steve Egan? Uh, yes, thank you very much indeed for the Minister's remarks so far. I think one of the big issues uh, facing London Derry is hope for the future. One of the things I would like the Minister to do is probably make a comment about what she's doing to progressing the McGee University and particularly the move towards the new medical school, which I would, send, I would think would send a very strong message to the people in London Derry about their future and their ability to come out of the COVID situation. Well, of course, uh, the Executive took a decision to support. Um, the medical school at McGee and I noticed actually in social media this morning um, that there were some calls out for their first students to apply for the 2021 uh, period. I think that that is very hopeful. Can I also say um, that I have been working uh, with my department around some of the city deal bids for the City of Londonderry and I'm hopeful that they will start to progress their business cases and we will see movement in relation to that and funding direction and, and as you say, hope for the city. Call Tom Buchanan. Uh, Mr Speaker, Minister, over recent days there has been much media coverage of a potential circuit breaker across the UK and indeed across the Irish Republic. If that were to be the case, how do you see the executive providing financial support to those who are unable to get to their place of work? Again, uh, a very important uh, and timely uh, question given uh, the speculation that is out there in the media. If the UK were to have a circuit breaker um, that um, would impact across the whole of the United Kingdom in the way that previous uh, lockdowns had, 
<coughs> then I do believe that it would be for our national government to provide the funding, the help uh, to businesses and to individuals who are unable to work uh, in that situation. Um, if we have regional or sub-regional um, issues around uh, further restrictions, then I think either we get some additional help from uh, the Exchequer or the Northern Ireland Executive will have to finance some of that themselves. Be aware that should we continue to do this, um, the Department of Health have indicated um, that this will impact on the economy for some time to come. Um, and uh, I hear speculation um, that we could require more than one uh, of these so-called circuit breakers. I think before we talk any further on this, we should, one, analyse the impact on the economy and analyse our ability to pay. I'm going to call Kiva Archibald. Karen Corlia, and um, I thank the Minister for her update um, and uh, concur with her about the economy not being some nebulous term. It's really about people, um, both our, our businesses, many of them SMEs and their workers, and the health of both are very much interlinked. In respect of that, can I just ask the Minister, in relation to the bids that she made and was allocated funding for to support economic recovery, is she considering how that funding could maybe be reprioritised um, to support some of those businesses that are struggling financially as a result of closures or reduced income? Garmelgut. Well, as I have indicated in, in uh, this uh, session of questions, um, the current situation is that we are looking at how we can immediately support those businesses um, who have been impacted by the restrictions uh, in the North West. Um, I have no doubt that we may have to look at that uh, on a further sub-regional basis uh, on a number uh, of occasions. Um, however, um, many of the bids I made were um, to help uh, the economy recover and are aimed at the structural recovery of the economy so that we have a tourism and hospitality sector uh, where people can work, earn their living and where we can be proud of Northern Ireland. Um, one of the great um, things that focus everyone's mind is the fact that for tourism and hospitality, we are depending on, or, or we're looking at 65,000 jobs within the economy and over 1 billion last year of its contribution to the local economy. And as uh, the owner of the Bishopsgate Hotel uh, in the city um, said to me uh, on, on uh, Thursday, Friday, um, we not only need hope, but we need to know that the executive and the assembly are with us in the long-term recovery um, of our uh, sector and that they will stand by us. And that's what most of those bids uh, are designed to do, particularly those bids around tourism and hospitality. Nicole Matthew O'Toole. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you to the Minister for coming and answering this urgent oral. Um, she's talked about bringing a paper to the executive reflecting on the economic impact of further lockdowns. But with respect to the Minister, we've yet to see a paper uh, positing a recovery plan for the first set of lockdowns. Can I ask what exactly she's going to bring to the executive? Will it be a long-term economic strategy that looks six months, one year down the line, to take us through the current uh, pandemic and out the other side? It would be really helpful to understand what exactly her department is going to produce. Can I thank the member for his question and recommend to him um, as an, uh, an urgent uh, and a required piece of reading uh, the document that we published um, in June of this year, which was Rebuilding a Stronger Economy. Um, and in that document, we addressed both short and medium term um, issues for the Northern Ireland economy. The need to support those traditional sectors that we rely upon, that are part of our values and that, that we um, have, have, many of us uh, are so interlinked with, but also the need to look at new opportunities for the Northern Ireland economy, particularly in the digital sector, in health and life sciences, in advanced manufacturing, um, and of course, 
uh, in uh, the green economy. So I, am, I'm, I have already a roadmap for those short and medium term interventions. And of course, we are preparing that overall economic strategy, which will not just be uh, for the Department for the Economy, but for the Department for Infrastructure, for the Department for Communities, because these are all aspects of building the Northern Ireland economy for the next century. Thank you. And I call Andrew Muir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, and thank the Minister for her responses thus far. Um, as the Minister will be aware, the support for the package that you are hopefully going to bring forward will come from the, the pot of funding of £55 million. That, uh, for, forbearance, Mr. Speaker, to explain, that pot is for TransLink, and I was previously an employee of TransLink, private coach operators, um, tourist uh, travel agents, uh, hauliers, uh, taxis and also the excluded, and probably more are forgotten about. If the executive is not given additional financial support, how confident is the minister that she will be able to support other council areas if they are given further restrictions? Can I thank the member for his question, but perhaps maybe um, to um, maybe correct one element of it. TransLink have already been given um, tens of millions of pounds in additional funding uh, during this financial year uh, to support um, the, the, a recovery position for TransLink, but also the losses um, that they have incurred um, during uh, the period of the pandemic. So uh, perhaps um, they have already um, had a lot of the allocations that they will, already, that they, uh, will either get or require. Um, yes, there are a huge number of demands um, within uh, the system. Um, and many people who are hurting in Northern Ireland and who have felt uh, the, the harshness of the pandemic, not just on health, on family life, but also on their finances. Um, and it will be, of course, for the finance minister and the executive um, to decide how that uh, money is um, distributed. Um, but we will, uh, of course, uh, keep uh, to the fore those areas that have uh, suffered from local restrictions. And we may need uh, to ensure that uh, the Exchequer know uh, of the difficulties for Northern Ireland. Uh, I will call Gordon Dunn. Thank the Minister for uh, making her points today and all her efforts to date in supporting businesses through the COVID crisis. Minister, how does the executive make such a difficult decision when we have to make a, a decision in relation to the balance of the health of our people and the economy of our country? Is, does it prove difficult? And can you uh, give us an assurance that, that it, it is fully assessed before such a decision is made? Can I thank uh, the member for his question? And he reflects um, on something that I think each and every executive minister feel as they have to make decisions. As I have said um, before, and as one executive minister today, this should never, ever be about hospitality or hospitals, because they are all interlinked. And long-term unemployment as a result of economic downturn caused by the pandemic, will have grave consequences in communities right across Northern Ireland. I have already referred in this House to the fact that we could see unemployment at figures not seen in Northern Ireland since the 1990s. That is a terrifying prospect um, for families and for communities and for individuals. So therefore, these are really difficult uh, questions. But let us not also uh, forget um, that we are a resilient people. We are a hopeful people. We have come through really dreadful circumstances um, and violent circumstances before. We will um, weather the storm of, of the pandemic, um, but it will require us all working together to make sure that our focus is in the right place and that we can get to the help to the people that really need it. I call Melissa McHugh. Uh, Minister, um, 
I live in the northwest, uh, Derry City is the Van District Council area, and I'm only too well aware of businesses that I know that have already closed down last week uh, in anticipation of the uh, restrictions coming in today. Uh, and I'm also too well aware of uh, employees who are on reduced income as a result of self-isolating, an anomaly that exists between them working in uh, private care homes and those that have worked for the Western Trust. Uh, but given that your own economic recovery strategy outlines the need to address regional imbalances, will you consider calling in Invest NI to prioritise areas of low employment uh, and where hopefully we would have a greater input from them in terms of job creation and financial assistance to them for job creation in the North West. Can I thank uh, the member for his question? Um, and you do raise a very important element of the economic strategy that I have outlined and uh, which the executive have adopted as part of their recovery um, strategy for, the, for Northern Ireland uh, as a whole. We need to address uh, economic imbalances. That won't just be for the North West. There are many other parts of Northern Ireland that uh, feel uh, the pain uh, of high unemployment uh, and reduced opportunities uh, for younger people. One of the biggest factors that we will be able to do that is bringing new jobs and actually investing in areas like skills and uh, education for our people. Just this morning, I announced 3,000 new online training places for those who have been impacted uh, by COVID or unemployment. I would urge people to look at those training opportunities and take the opportunity now, while furlough still exists or while there are reduced hours, to upskill and uh, improve chances um, in the labour market. That is really important. Of course, I've also introduced um, the package on um, apprenticeships, um, and I um, will continue to look for opportunities, finance is permitting, uh, to help and improve the lot uh, of particularly young people who have been disproportionately impacted by uh, COVID-19. Um, in terms of Invest Northern Ireland, they of course uh, do work with local councils um, and uh, in, with local development uh, structures to try uh, to address skills, uh, jobs and imbalances in the local economy. And finally, I'm looking forward also uh, to progressing Project Stratum, which I think will help in uh, regional uh, imbalances in the economy, since so much of Project Stratum will cover rural areas of Northern Ireland, therefore improving connectivity and the ability uh, for firms and individuals to be competitive at their work. Thank you, and I call Justin McNulty. Guru Mayabut, Kim Carla, can I thank the Minister for coming to the House today and for her answers thus far. The Minister will be aware of the plight of cross-border workers. Um, and in, I know that cross-border workers are, are impacted adversely in the North West and in my own region throughout this pandemic. Whenever support is brought forward, Minister, for the North West and for any future uh, COVID restrictions across the North, will she undertake to ensure that her, along with the Communities Minister, who ultimately has responsibility for cross-border workers under EU law, will, take, will ensure that cross-border workers are looked after as part of any uh, future arrangements. Can I thank uh, the member uh, for his question? So I'm going to answer this in two parts um, today. Um, one is the very important um, operation of the common travel area, which gives people the right to live and work um, in uh, both jurisdictions right across <coughs> the British Isles. And I think that that is very important um, and today I was briefing the executive um, on um, how we could ensure uh, that qualifications were recognised in all of those areas so that working across borders becomes easier. We need to see the detail on that fairly quickly um, from the negotiations uh, and from that perspective. I think the member refers uh, in his uh, question uh, to around those people who perhaps work 
um, in um, the Republic, but because they live in Northern Ireland, cannot claim the unemployment um, benefit that was awarded to those people who were on furlough, etc. Um, I'm afraid this is uh, an EU regulation, and this is part of the problem uh, of being controlled um, by um, the European Union. Members, that concludes this item of business. Thank you all. And we are moving on now to the we return to the debate on the consequences of the British government breaking international law motion. And I now call Paul Gibbon. Mr. Speaker, and uh, the minister there took us neatly into a debate on on Brexit. <laughs> uh, so.